Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about other card games in terms of magic and why it's not all that bad. I know not all my videos on this channel are, let's say not many of the videos on this channel are super positive about Magic the Gathering, uh, mainly because one of the main, I'm concerned about just how much, how much stuff is coming out. And that sounds very strange because you might say more stuff the better. But let me tell you about a few other card games and I'll start with Hello Kitty because the monthly Magic line box had a ton of that. And that was free product. That was product Dave and Adam sent me and it didn't cost me any money. And it had it, at one time was $4 a booster pack of Hello Kitty cards. Now they, Dave and Adams is giving it away and they can't even give it away because it just, you know, it has deteriorated in value. Uh, and the reason I'm going to talk about these various other card games, including Card Fight Vanguard, as well as the only one that has kind of held the test of time is Pokemon. But Card Fight Vanguard and Yuyasha is because their card games have just obliterated. I mean, there's no value in it. Yes, for Inuyasha, some of the unopened stuff is kind of valuable because you never see it in the wild open anymore. But for the mo most part, no one plays the game anymore, They're, and the anime is over. Uh, no one, there's no reason to buy the card, so the card has tanked from the four ninety nine, three ninety nine dollars boost pack all the way down to like 15 cents at one time, where you could buy a boost pack or for like 15 or 20 cents. And that has never happened to Magic. For the most part, the worst set I've seen is Dragon Maze. And Dragon Maze went from $40 a fat pack to $20 a fat pack, and it's still around $20, $25 a fat pack. However, when you buy a Magic product, you know that it has value, you know that it will kind of stand the test of time when compared to other card games like the Hello Kitty card. I was opening the Hello Kitty stuff and it wasn't bad. The product, it had like stickers at Shinies, like it had um, cartoon, like a, a figure in different color. Like it, they didn't do a bad job designing it. Uh, it just absolutely, after a little bit of time, no one wanted it. And the same with Card Fight Vanguard was Card Fight Vanguard is a game created by Bushiro that I used to play a lot of and I don't play anymore. I used to have so many promos of that game. It just, I mean, it, they did not develop the game as Magic would develop the game where they were very conscious. Uh, the power creep was too real. So after the eighth set, the set and set number one, the alpha, if you will, it was unplayable. The, the cards were unplayable because set eight was so much better than set one because they needed to sell set eight. So in terms of power creep and controlling power creep, Magic has done a fantastic job doing that. And that's one of the reasons card games go away is because of that power creep. And people were just like, oh, well, that card is so strong. I, I either have to buy that new card or I have to you know, quit the game. And Magic has done a good job stabilizing that in the standard environment, so I compliment them on that. Uh, the other one reason is that there's too much product, and that's what I wanted to talk about. A lot of card games I played, Inuyasha, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, all this stuff, when product was low and there weren't that many sets available, the game seemed okay and for the player base. You don't want your product to be over your player base. You want to be really uh, recognize how many players you have and how much products they are willing to pay for in a year. Uh, and that would be my one concern to Magic the Gathering at this time is that perhaps they're producing too much product given that their player base according to them is not growing as rapidly as it did in the past. So anyway, leave me a comment with your opinion. Bye guys.